Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today on Cooking Up Love, I'm going to be showing you five of my family's favorite chili recipes that you can make in the crock pot or on the stovetop. These are perfect for this time of year, and we always have some chili cooking for potlucks and for all the big game day parties, especially for the Super Bowl. Who's your pick, Cincinnati or LA? This is gonna be a great game. Okay, let's get started with the chili. You'll find links for all of the recipes in the description below. First up is our classic crock pot chili recipe that so many of you have tried and love. This chili is packed with amazing flavors and it's so chunky with ground beef, beans, and lots of veggies. Start by dicing two peppers. I'm using one red and one green pepper, three ribs of celery, a half of a jalapeno, and one small onion. You're going to want to have all of this ready to saute after the bacon is done. Next, heat a large skillet over medium heat and cook five strips of bacon. I'm using a thick cut hickory smoked bacon. Cook the bacon until it's slightly crisp but not overdone. Remove it from the pan and set it aside. And you're going to want to leave all of this bacon fat. We're going to be using it. Add all of the veggies that we just diced up and cook these over medium heat for about five minutes just until they're tender. Then remove them from the pan and try to leave as much of the bacon fat as you can in the pan. And if you've tried this chili and left a comment, thank you so much. I read every one and I'm so happy our recipes are helping so many of you make delicious food to share with everyone you love. This recipe uses two pounds of ground beef. You'll want to cook it in two batches, a pound of ground beef at a time, so the beef can get good color and so it doesn't steam. Break the beef into chunks about an inch or two inches in size. Once it's browned, remove it from the skillet and cook the next batch. Next for the spices, measure out four tablespoons of chili powder, one tablespoon of dried oregano, one tablespoon of white sugar, two teaspoons of cumin, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of Lowry's seasoned salt, three teaspoons of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon of dried basil, and a half teaspoon of black pepper. This spice mixture has tons of flavor, but it's still mild enough for most people to enjoy. If you like a spicier chili, add more chili powder or more cayenne pepper. In the crock pot, combine one 10 and a half ounce can of beef consomme and one six ounce can of tomato paste and stir. Add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and the spice mixture and stir to combine. Then add two cans of diced tomatoes and two cans of chili beans with the sauce. Don't drain them, we want all of that chili flavor. I'm using one can of kidney beans and one with pinto beans. Chop or crumble the cooked bacon and add it to the crock pot. Add the ground beef and all of the veggies that we sauteed earlier. Mix this all up, cover the crock pot, and cook on low for six to eight hours. Some people have asked if the chili really needs to cook for six to eight hours. Everything is cooked, so if you'd like to serve it sooner, it'll be just fine, but it'll be even better if it's had a chance to cook low and slow. And it's also really good the next day if you're lucky enough to have leftovers. Next up is our crock pot chipotle chili. This one might just be my new favorite. It gets its flavor from plenty of chipotle and adobo sauce, some spices, and a touch of Dr. Pepper. And if this is your first time at our channel, we believe that sharing homemade food spreads joy and touches lives, and we'll show you how to make delicious dishes you can proudly share with everyone you love like this incredible crock pot chipotle chili. I'm starting with a chuck roast that's about a pound and a half. Choose a roast that's well marbled and trim off any larger sections of fat. Cut the roast into chunks about an inch in size. Season the meat with salt and pepper, and then heat a large skillet or a Dutch oven over medium heat. Add a tablespoon of avocado oil, and sear the meat in a single layer, leaving it in the pan and not stirring it until it's well browned on one side. While the beef is cooking, roughly chop one medium onion and about a cup of bell peppers. And after the beef has cooked for about four to five minutes, remove it from the pot. 
You can see the great flavor that's here on the bottom of the pot with all of the brown bits. Add the onions and the peppers and stir, scraping the sides and the bottom to release the browned meat. Cook the vegetables just until they're softened and that'll be about three to four minutes. Okay, now for the spices. I'm using Morton and Bassett's chili powder and I really like the blend of chili powders and a couple of other spices. We'll need one tablespoon of this, two teaspoons of cumin, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half teaspoon of kosher salt. Give this all a stir and let this cook for a minute or two. Then add two tablespoons of tomato paste and cook this for another minute or two. I'm adding a cup of water and two teaspoons of better than bullion beef base. You can also use beef broth, but I like using this for a more beefier flavor without having to add a lot of extra liquid. Next, I'm going to add the heat. I'm using diced chipotle peppers in adobo. If you can't find this, you can use the canned chipotles in adobo and just dice the chipotles before adding. I've used about six teaspoons or about a tablespoon and a half. Give this a stir. Add a can of Rotel tomatoes and a can of fire roasted tomatoes. And I've drained the liquid off of both of these. Then drain and rinse two cans of your favorite beans and add them to the pot. I'm using pinto beans. Stir this all up. And now for just a little bit of sweetness, a little Dr. Pepper. Add a half cup to the chili mixture and stir. Add the beef back into the chili and give it a stir and then give it a taste and see if it's spicy enough for you. I'm adding another two teaspoons of the beef concentrate just for a more beefier taste. Pour the chili into a crock pot, cover it up and cook on high for four hours. You could also cook this on low for six hours. And if you used beef broth, you may want to add a tablespoon or two of masa harina flour to thicken it up near the end of cooking. This crock pot chili gets its heat from the chipotle peppers. It's a smoky spiciness with just a touch of sweetness in the background. And I don't think you'll have many leftovers with this one. Next up, our buffalo chicken chili. Yeah, that's right, Frank's Red Hot Sauce. This one is so good. And two cans of white beans help make this a tasty, hearty chili. You'll need a pound to a pound and a half of boneless, skinless chicken. And you can use chicken breasts, thighs, tenders. Cut the chicken into pieces about a half inch in size and then season with salt and pepper. Then heat a large heavy bottom pot over medium heat and add a tablespoon of avocado oil and cook for five to six minutes. While the chicken is cooking, dice about a half cup of onions and a half cup of celery. And I like to use sweet onions most of the time. I think the flavor is less harsh and they're definitely easier on the eyes, so no tears. Add the onion and the celery to the chicken and cook them just until the vegetables begin to soften and that'll be about five minutes. And if you're new here, thanks for watching our channel. If you love to entertain, you should check out our playlist for game day and party favorites. They're all simple to make and I guarantee they taste incredible. Okay, back to the spices. You'll want to measure out a half teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, and two tablespoons of chili powder. And I'm using that Morton and Bassett chili powder blend again. It's not overly spicy and it's got great flavor, but if you don't have it, you can use your favorite chili powder. Give this a stir and then cook for a minute or two to toast the spices a bit. Then add three cups of chicken broth. and one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes, and I've drained the juice out of the tomatoes. Drain and rinse two cans of great white northern beans, and then stir them into the chili. This already looks so good, and if you stop here, you've got a delicious white bean chicken chili. Next, I'm going to stir in about a quarter cup of Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce, and you can add more if you want a spicier chili. Simmer uncovered for 20 to 30 minutes. The chicken gets nice and tender and the spices meld all together. And this buffalo chicken chili is so packed with flavor and it's ready in less than an hour. This is perfect for game day or potlucks or put it in the crock pot to keep it warm. 
And we like to serve it in a bowl over potatoes, rice, and it is super good, spooned over some creamy homemade mac and cheese. Add your favorite toppings, sour cream, chopped celery, shredded carrots, maybe some blue cheese. I like to drizzle in some more hot sauce on top because I can never have enough spice. Up next, I've got our famous Texas chili. I can't wait for you to try this. It's got a thick, rich red sauce with a hearty kick, tender chunks of seared beef, and if you're a fan of Houston's Saturday special, Firehouse Chili, especially before they started adding beans to it, you are going to love enjoying this at home on any day of the week. Let's get you closer to your very own bowl of red. This recipe is tried, tested, and prize winning. My husband has swept up his share of chili cook-off awards with this authentic Texas chili recipe. Get ready for goodness and bragging rights. Here we go. We'll be using dried chilies to make the base of our recipe, and you'll want to look for chilies that are soft and pliable. If they're hard and brittle, they're a bit past their prime. You'll need one dried pasilla. This is a mild to medium hot, rich flavored chili. Two dried wahio peppers, which are the second most commonly used dried chili. They're mild, they don't have very much heat. Plus one ancho, and that's a dried poblano with a deep red color and wrinkled skin. And this has a sweet, mild, medium heat. Open the chilies and discard the stems and the seeds. I'm cutting the peppers now to make it easier to blend later. In a large Dutch oven or heavy bottom pot, toast the dried chili peppers over medium heat. This is going to wake up the heat a little bit, and you'll want to toast them for just a few minutes until they're fragrant. Then add three cups of beef broth and bring the broth to a light boil. Simmer this for 15 minutes to soften the chilies. And while that's cooking, dice up one large onion and mince three cloves of garlic. Once the chilies have simmered for 15 minutes, remove the broth and the chilies and puree it using a blender or a food processor. And I'm using my Nutribullet. Puree the broth and the peppers until it's a smooth consistency. And it's fine if you have some small pieces. In the same pot, saute four slices of bacon. I'm using center cut bacon, which has the most meat, and then cutting it into pieces right into the pot. Cook this over medium heat until the bacon is crisp and you've rendered out the fat. Season the beef with salt and pepper and then begin adding it to the pot. And I've trimmed the gristle and fat off of two and a half pounds of short ribs that I'm using today. And you could also use chuck or sirloin or even ground chuck here. We're going to cook the beef without stirring until it's seared and has developed a nice moire effect. And I'm removing the bacon once it's crisp. Remember not to crowd the pieces of beef or it will just begin to steam instead of sear. And you'll probably need to do this in two or three medium sized batches. So once the first batch is done, remove it and add the next. While the beef is cooking, mix up the spices. Combine two tablespoons of cumin, one tablespoon of coriander, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, and then once the meat has been seared, return the beef and the bacon to the pan. Add the chili and the broth. Add the dried spices and stir. Chipotles are dried smoked jalapenos and this is gonna give the chili a smoky, sweet, spicy flavor. I'm adding two chipotles and one tablespoon of the adobo sauce. Then add the onions and garlic and cook it just until they've softened and that'll be about 10 minutes. Add the two tablespoons of tomato paste and stir. Then add two 14 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. Two cups of water and two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I'm adding three tablespoons of masa harina and stirring it in. You can simmer this on low for two to three hours or transfer it to your crock pot and cook it on low to three to four hours. Slow cooking this chili not only helps the flavors all meld together, but it also ensures that your beef is going to be deliciously tender. Make sure you taste and adjust the spices to your level of heat intensity. The dried peppers can vary in spiciness, so you'll want to taste it so you can kick it up even more if you like. I like to use the Paul Prudhomme Chipotle Chili Pepper Blend, and it can be really intense, so start off slowly and then build up to your heat tolerance. 
Serve with corn chips, cheddar cheese, and any additional toppings of your choice. We like to add sour cream on top because we like it spicy and the sour cream helps tame the heat a little. Okay, this is our last chili for today. Take a look at our amazing, creamy, white bean chicken chili. It's a delicious mix of southwestern spices, cream cheese, plus our secret ingredients that take this to the next level. If your crew loves chili, this white bean chicken chili is a delicious way to change things up. And if you're heading to a chili cook-off, the cream cheese, cream corn, and frozen corn at the end takes this chili to the finals every time. First, chop one small onion and add it to your crock pot or slow cooker. Then add two cloves of minced garlic. Next, mix together the spices. We'll need one tablespoon of ground chili powder, one tablespoon of ground cumin, three quarter teaspoon of ground oregano, three quarter teaspoons of smoked paprika, a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a half teaspoon of black pepper and one teaspoon of kosher salt. This chili has some good heat to it. And if you like your chili spicy, you can kick this up with a little more chili powder and cayenne in this step. Give this a good stir to blend everything together. And this crock pot chili recipe is so easy to put together. Everything is going right into the crock pot. Next, pour in three cups of chicken stock, then add the spice mixture and stir it to combine. Add the can of white beans that have been drained and rinsed the can of cream corn, and the drained can of green chilies. I'm using mild, you could also use hot for a spicier chili. Add the raw chicken breast and make sure that there's enough liquid in the pot so that they're completely covered. Then just cover and cook on high for four hours or on low for six hours until the chicken is tender. Then remove the chicken from the crock pot and shred it in a separate bowl using two forks. You could also cut the chicken into chunks if you prefer. Now we're going to add the softened cream cheese to make this even creamier. First, cut the cream cheese into cubes and add it to the chili and stir. The cream cheese will begin to melt and to help any of the last bits dissolve, you can use a whisk and gently whisk the mixture until it's smooth and creamy. Add the shredded chicken back into the chili along with about a half cup of frozen corn, more if you like. Heat this on high for 15 minutes with the cover off, heating the corn through and thickening the chili. And to make some quick homemade tortilla strips to top our chili, slice a couple of corn or flour tortillas. A pizza cutter makes this super fast. Heat two tablespoons of olive oil in a medium skillet and fry the tortilla strips just until they're crunchy. And I like to top my tortilla strips with a squeeze of lime juice and a sprinkle of salt. Get the bowls ready and serve up this delicious creamy white bean chicken chili with your favorite chili toppings. Our favorites for this are sour cream, lime wedges, cilantro, avocado, jalapenos or pickled jalapenos, shredded cheese, homemade tortilla strips, Fritos or crushed tortilla chips. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed all of our chili recipes, whether you're making it for family, to share on game day, or going for the gold at your next chili cook-off. I'd love to have you join us every week when we share new recipes. Hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you know when we've posted the next one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.